Good morning, everyone. It's Tuesday, December 8th. From the San Antonio Express News, my name is Luis Vasquez, and this is your Express Briefing. All of the stories you need to know to start your day. You can expect sunny skies and a high of 73 degrees in San Antonio today. Official approval looms for pharmaceutical companies Pfizer and Moderna in the next few weeks as they prepare to make COVID-19 vaccines available to the public. We have everything you need to know about both vaccines over at ExpressNews.com. The Texas Commission on Law Enforcement, which oversees licensing of the state's 102,000 police officers and jailers, could be in for a major overhaul, according to state officials Monday morning. And now let's move on to our top stories for the day. From April 4th to April 10th, during the height of the stay-at-home orders, traffic across the state was down a staggering 44% over a pre-pandemic week from February 22nd through the 28th. San Antonio, incidentally, had the state's largest decline, some 50%. But, confounding the safety researchers, while urban multi-vehicle crashes decreased about 56%, fatal wrecks only decreased by about 15% in April compared to the same month in three previous years, and they even increased in some cities. The proportion of all crashes that were fatal doubled statewide. The anecdotal but perfectly logical explanation some Texas Department of Traffic Engineers say appears to be that with fewer drivers on the road, people are able to drive the full speed limit, and yes, even speed dangerously. Those stats should offer a cautionary note during the holiday season. Bruce Selkraig takes a closer look at Texas's fight against highway deaths in his latest article. 18 years ago, Ronnie Perez wanted to join a Girl Scout troop in her neighborhood, but there wasn't one. Her mother, Annette Perez, stepped up and started a troop to give her daughter the experience she didn't have as a young girl. The single mother of two children has been the Girl Scout leader of Troop 384 for nearly 20 years, mentoring girls from ages 6 to 17. Family members said the woman known in the troop as Miss Annette lives and breathes Girl Scouts. You can read more about Ms. Annette's volunteerism through illness and through the coronavirus pandemic in this week's edition of San Antonio Stories. As COVID-19 cases have risen dramatically in Texas and across the country, there's one place where the coronavirus seems to spread less than others, the classroom. While Texas public school districts report that about 41,000 students and 24,600 staff members have tested positive since the start of the school year, equal to slightly less than 2% of those on campuses, according to state estimates, healthcare experts said only a small share of those cases stem from in-classroom transmission. With the first semester nearing its end, health officials say early results from reopening schools are largely reassuring, though they tempered their optimism with a few warnings. Kayla Harris and Jacob Carpenter have the full story over at ExpressNews.com. In Texas, documents obtained by Hearst newspapers show the agency coordinated with nearly a dozen Texas departments in response to planned protests against police brutality. They also show the new role of Customs and Border Protection, which has seen supercharged growth and become the nation's largest federal law enforcement agency. Agents are now being deployed to quell unrest in dense, urban cities far from the border, opposing on the streets U.S. citizens engaging in First Amendment-protected protests, deployments where critics and local leaders say Customs and Border Protection's presence actually made the situation worse and more violent. The agency says it responds to requests of all kinds from law enforcement agencies around the country and that it's not restricted to border areas or duties associated with border protection. Read St. John Bernard's latest article to find out more on this story. Head over to expressnews.com to check out our all-new podcast page. There, you'll be able to find new episodes of Poodle Politics, hosted by columnist Gilbert Garcia, the Spurs Insider Podcast, hosted by sports columnist Mike Finger, and The Docket, hosted by courts and crime reporter Elizabeth Savala. Next up are your need-to-know headlines. You can find all of these headlines and more inside of your Express News subscription. (music) 
Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf said that bars that don't serve food will be required to close as of Thursday night because of the high positivity rate. He said the bars could be given some leeway by state regulators if they want to pursue a food license or a contract with a food vendor. Businesses in a handful of Texas cities could begin regularly testing employees for the coronavirus under a new pilot program that the state announced on Monday. USAA said on Monday that the phased return of its employees will begin on February 1st rather than right after the start of the new year. Their return originally was planned for September 1st but got pushed back to the beginning of January after COVID-19 cases surged in June. With two critical races for the U.S. Senate on the ballot on January 5th in Georgia, some of the biggest names in Texas politics are making a beeline for it with hopes of influencing the outcome of those races, and maybe boost their own national profiles in the process. A popular YouTuber from Florida was able to swim in the Riverwalk portion of the San Antonio River for three to five minutes before officials ordered him to get out, according to a video posted on Brandon Jordan's channel last month. Austin Mayor Steve Adler went on vacation to Mexico in November after hosting a wedding for his daughter. Adler has since apologized for the family vacation in an open letter. At the outset of his second Spurs training camp, Trey Lyles is hoping to pick up where he left off last spring before his season was cut short by appendicitis. Lyles is intent to prove himself as part of the Spurs' long-term future. Texas schools and districts will no longer get credit under the A-F through rating system for graduates joining the armed forces a change that comes as a small percentage of self-reported abnormally high enlistment rates. Representative Al Green will lead Texas Democrats in the U.S. House for the next two years as delegation chair, and Green says his top priority is getting an infrastructure deal done, which eluded lawmakers for four years under President Donald Trump. International student enrollment is down 13% at Texas public colleges and nearly 12% at private or independent institutions compared to a year ago, according to preliminary numbers from the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board. The Alamo College District announced a $1 million donation Monday that will fund scholarships for students participating in the Alamo Promise programs. Gasoline sales over Thanksgiving week plunged to the lowest levels in more than two decades as the coronavirus pandemic kept millions of Americans close to home. All football activities in Texas remained paused Monday as the program awaits further test results after three players and two staff members turned up positive for COVID-19 on Sunday. Child Protective Services caseworker Nicole Orozco spent Monday morning carrying on the legacy of a good Samaritan to children in need. Her assignment? Pick up toys at a storage unit packed with donated items collected by the late Zenobia Coverson. Orozco squeezed past fellow caseworkers as she lugged plastic bags bulging with games and stuffed animals for children ages 4 to 14. The 34-year-old with the Family-Based Safety Services Division said that thanks to Coverson, there were more than enough presents for foster care children. She's not here and she's still giving, Orozco said. You can read more about Coverson and her legacy over at ExpressNews.com. The 62nd Annual Windcrest Light-Up celebrates the military this year with festive jeeps and inflatable Santas clad in camo. Coronavirus may have reduced the first night festivities, but it couldn't dim the San Antonio suburbs' show-stopping holiday displays. The Dooryard, a self-serve taproom bar and restaurant on De Zavala near Chavano Park, will open Saturday with a full lineup of 30 different beers, ciders, and seltzers. 
Spurs coach Greg Popovich is hopeful Lonnie Walker IV can begin practicing Tuesday after the third-year guard missed the first three group workouts with an ailing lower back. Catch up with all the action from the past week with our final football rankings of 2020, plus updated rankings and players of the week for girls basketball and boys basketball. San Antonio artist Mark Menjivar hopes shows at Sala Diaz and Blue Star get viewers thinking about the death penalty in Texas via two new exhibits. And that's all for today. This was your Express Briefing for Tuesday, December 8th. My name is Luis Vasquez. Please consider becoming an Express News subscriber to get in-depth coverage on all the stories you heard today. Also, be sure to rate and review this podcast inside of your Apple Podcast app as it really helps the show. Have a wonderful day, everyone.